I bought these specifically just to play around with in my sketchbook, and so that's what we're going to do today. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today I am going to be having another chill sketchbook session kind of video. I will be using the Tritone Colored Pencils by Ko E. Noor. I just bought these specifically so I could play around in my sketchbook with them. They're not going to be supplementing my regular colored pencils or anything like that. I don't know if there's any information on light fast ratings or anything like that. I just want to have fun and see what they're like. I don't have the highest hopes as far as the range of values in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought they'd be fun and I just thought it would be another fun tool to use in my sketchbook. So I'm thinking about trying some like landscapey things or maybe just sketching with them. We'll see where it goes. So let's take a look at the set. Typical Koe Noor branding. Oh, and I should mention, I got this from TJ Maxx of all places. I feel like it was like 15 bucks. I don't know if that's a deal or not. Honestly, I never checked other sites to see what they price them at. And this was a while ago. I've had this for a long time. So we have, I think this one might just be a blender. Yep. We have the blender. Then we have, oh, they have fun names. Matagold, Flame, Sunset. Volcano, Evening Storm, Summer Sky, Ocean, Meadow, Forest, Rainforest, and Tiger. That's fun. And basically, it's three colors rolled into one. You can see here, like, look at that pattern. And down here, it also shows what colors are in it. And then it has the gold tip, like a lot of their pencils do. Very nice wood barrel. You know, it's the typical Koe Noor, and it's the Hardmouth. But it's very typical of their colored pencils. So, and it doesn't look like they're water-soluble. Usually, there's a paintbrush. And yeah, so obviously, no light fast information on here. I don't have anything in here. If I find anything online, I'll link it in the description. I don't have high hopes for that. But I wasn't looking for that anyways. Like I said, I... I have plenty of colored pencils that are light fast. This was mainly just because of the novelty of it. I just wanted to try it and have fun and I'll use it in my sketchbook where I'm not planning to sell anything and I'm not worried if it's going to fade or not. Just there we go. So there's the little rundown on these. Let's get to work. All right, so I'm starting off with the swatches and let me tell you. This was one of the most satisfying swatching experiences I've ever had. I'm not somebody who really likes to swatch. I've swatched more lately in this sketchbook than I have probably in my entire life. But this was so much fun with these different colors coming out from these pencils. And I am rotating the pencil as I swatch. So you'll see me stop and pick up the pencil. That's because I'm rotating it so that I can get the maximum variety of color in the swatch. Oh, super fun. I love it. This one's really cool. Like, look at it. It's like tie-dye. And I am a hippie girl at heart. I love my tie-dye. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Although I do have to say the greens were very similar. And I'm also kind of disappointed that Ocean didn't have some darker blues showing through. I was really hoping there would be a little bit more of a dark blue. Because there's not a ton of darkness in this set. And as it turns out, they have another set with the same amount of pencils that actually has a black, gray, and white. I discovered this when I was trying to find links, some affiliate links for these pencils. It doesn't have the blender, but it has more of a variety, and I feel like it also has a darker blue in it. So I don't know what's going on, but I'll pop that up so you can see the difference between the sets. Was not a fan of that. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was bummed. Like, why didn't I find that other set? I honestly think that my set is actually the old set and the other set is the new set because I can't find my set for sale anywhere other than Hobby Lobby and I'm not not linking to there. Uh, so yeah, I think that this is actually an old set. And so I don't know that it'll be available. I'll try to link it, but I have not been able to find a link for it yet, but that's okay because the new set looks better anyway. 
I feel like the new set has a better variety of color. In this one, the greens were all pretty similar and Volcano and Sunset were quite similar or yeah, Volcano and Sunset. Flame was pretty good, but it didn't have much variation. The Madigold doesn't seem to have much variation. And I honestly didn't really need a, a blending pencil because I already have some of their blending pencils. And so I do think the new set is probably better, which is probably why they've updated it because that's what it really looks like here. I cannot find the set anywhere. And that's probably why it ended up so cheap at TJ Maxx. But yeah, so they also have a 24 set. I will link that in the description below as well if you're interested in that. Then I'm testing to see if they are erasable and they worked pretty well with my Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser or Precision Eraser. I never remember what it's called. And I'm also testing it with black and white because I knew I was going to have to bring a black and a white pencil in. I should have brought in a poly color, but those are stashed away in the studio and I was not going to look for them. So I just brought my Derwent Drawing Chinese White, which is the white I use in every, pretty much every colored pencil piece I ever do. And I also brought in the black from the same line because you really don't need any other black or white. That is like the black is black. That is the white is white on the market pretty much, in my opinion. Don't come at me if you like something better. We all have our, we all have our things. We all have the things that we like the most and that works best for us. And then I'm just trying some layering and blending and some little doodads and whatnots and what have you's. Do you like my technical terminology? <laughs> Similar to last week, I am running on fumes. I am like living off of caffeine and dreams right now, so... <laughs> If I'm a little bit spunky during this voiceover, that's what you get, folks. And then I'm trying out the blending pencil, which I have some of their blending pencils already, and they work well. I use them in my other colored pencil work. Although that one still had the hard film on it, so I really had to work at it at first. So it's basically just a bunch of experimenting. And I knew I wanted to do something nature themed or landscape. I really love drawing landscapes in colored pencil. And so I just wanted to try that out. And I'm sorry that it's going off screen. I'm doing my best, folks. <laughs> oh, there we go. And uh, some fun leaves again. I just wanted to see what it was like to sketch with them and how it was to blend them, how they were with layering, just to get an idea before I jumped into my little pieces that I end up doing. This is all just a trial for later on because I do plan on using these in other aspects in my sketchbook. And so this is just a way for me to figure out what I can do with them. So I traced the tin lid so that I could get a nice like landscape in there. I'm basically doing thumbnails for this video. And I don't have a reference for this one. I am just playing it by ear and going on like my previous knowledge of landscapes. It is not going to be a masterpiece. However, I did discover what I could do with these pencils and that was the end game. Starting off with the sky and the clouds, I basically just draw around where I want the clouds to be. Again, playing it by ear. I love drawing and painting skies. It is one of my favorite things ever. And just seeing how it blends out. And like I said, initially, I didn't want to do too much blending. Like I want to do some with a blending pencil, some with my white, things like that. I didn't want to come in with a solvent to blend because I was afraid it would wash away all the subtle nuances of color. But this paper is not the best for colored pencil. For sketchy applications, yes. And I really could have tested this out on a smoother paper, but I really just wanted to test it here because this is why I bought them. So I don't mind it being a little bit sketchy because it's a sketchbook. But if I were to try and do an actual like realism piece with them, which I mean that, you know. Never had any expectations of doing that. But if I like really wanted to do a full on piece that I was going to sell or something like that, then I would have to use it. Like I would obviously have to try to get a better paper to do it on 
or use a better paper that I have on hand. Because this sketchbook has a smooth and rough side on the pages, which is one of my favorite things about it. But, and this is the smooth side of the page, but some of that texture from the other side inevitably is going to show through. So that's where we're getting kind of that staticiness. But it's not the pencils. I have used their polycolor pencils before, and I love them. They're, they're beautiful. They're very similar, if not the same exact thing as the Blick colored pencils, because I'm pretty sure they're made in the same plant. And so they blend well. They work really well. I already knew that that would you know, be fine with these. So it's really more the paper than it is the pencils. And these came pre-sharpened and I really should have sharpened them more. A couple of them I did end up sharpening more, but a few of them I didn't. And obviously a sharper pencil would work to get into the grooves of the paper a little bit better. But that graininess that you're seeing, that staticiness, that's mostly the paper. So in the end, I do end up bringing in some solvent to blend it out mainly because I wanted to see if they do blend, but also, like I said, this paper, eh, it is what it is. But I, I really wanted to see the nuance of color before I blended it out. And so that's why I wasn't too picky about blending it in my first initial applications. And then I just decided to do a couple other squares. So this little one, I do have a reference for. You've actually seen me draw this before. It's a tree. I drew this when I was testing out some graphite pencils, I feel like it was the Faber-Castells, the matte Faber-Castell graphite, I believe. I can link that in the description below. But I'm just reusing that reference. I wanted to draw a tree. And this time I'm kind of doing a, an underpainting. I'm using just my black and going in with shadows and some subtle shading because obviously the heavier the pressure the blacker it's going to get the lighter the pressure the lighter it will be because it's a very soft pencil so it's able to get those nuances and then I want to see what it'd be like to just come over and glaze the colors over it because colored pencils are transparent you can do some glazing with them so I basically got my shadows in first since these pencils do not get really dark so I couldn't really get the shadows with these pencils. Of course, if I had the other set, <laughs> if I had the other set, I would have a black gray combination pencil and it might've been a different story. I didn't know that there was two different sets, two different 12 sets. I don't know why they do these things. Again, I didn't get this as an, at an art supply shop though. So it's not like I had a variety. This was the only one they had. It was TJ Maxx. I saw it on a whim and I bought it, but still. Okay, and now moving on, I'm just doing a fun close-up cloud sky piece. Kind of an abstract piece because, again, this one I also didn't have a reference for. And I just wanted to play around to see how soft I could get the clouds, play around with the erasability so that I could soften lines and things like that. But I'm still being fairly sketchy to kind of get that colorful look. And I did add a few warmer colors in the cloud itself to kind of feel like it's getting towards sunset, but not quite there yet. All right, now I'm coming in and I decided I can't stand the static any longer. I am going to blend. So I'm trying the melts on it first by Holbein. I love the Holbein melts. They do incredible things and it works pretty well, but it sunk into the paper differently. And then I am trying some of the Zestit Pencil Blend. These are the two blending mediums that I use the most. And that's convenient because I have it in the water brush. I need to put some of my melts in the water brush too. So I just kind of kept going with that because I already had the water brush in my hand. And blending it out. And the color stayed pretty well. I was pretty impressed with that. Okay, so here are my final little landscape pieces that I did to try out the Koenor Tritone pencils. I had a lot of fun with this. I do think that these would be better on smoother paper. This paper is smooth, but it has a rough side and a smooth side. Each of my sketchbook pages do, which is nice. I really like that. But a little bit of that rough texture from the other side is showing through, and it kind of gives that little staticky look. I'm not a huge fan of that. I didn't want to blend out the pencils too much because I was afraid it would lose their 
multicolored quality, but I did end up bringing in some Holbein melts and I also brought in a water brush that has some zest in it and they both work to blend it out and it definitely looks better blended out and it still kind of has that really colorful quality, especially down here in the water and things like that. So I didn't lose it too much. I don't know how it would be on smooth paper. Again, I bought these specifically so I could use them in my sketchbook. So this is how I'm mostly going to be using them. And for that aspect of things, I don't mind them being a little bit sketchy. If I were planning on using them in pieces that I wanted to sell, then I would definitely be trying them on, you know, Arches Hot Press watercolor paper or the Fluid 100 watercolor paper, which are two different papers that I use quite often, or even Stonehenge. You know, those are papers that I use often when I'm working in colored pencil. So I would try it out on that, but I just plan on using this in my sketchbook. And I think it did pretty darn well for that. But yeah, so there, that's where we're at. These are a lot of fun and I love the colorful aspect. I didn't find any light fast ratings online. All I found was a blog that stated that they're made from the, the same cores as their polycolors. And so... The light fastness should be there but again that I, that seemed to be like speculation the same way I speculated and so where I don't have the hard and fast actual light fast ratings again I will only be using these in my sketchbook but they were beautiful they were fun to work with they are going to be a great addition to my sketchbook supply stash so yeah thank you so much for watching I hope that you liked this video I will see you next week you have a fantastic day Bye. Wait, don't go away just yet. If you liked this video, you're sure to like this one too. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe.